one, two, three. Hello, YouTube. Today I was thinking I would do uh, an introduction to the PCV system on the Volvo G40. I had learned about this system, or heard about it, by searching through IPD USA. I was reading some of the tech articles, and they started talking about extended oil changes in the positive crankcase ventilation system, which I have on that paper, which I'll read in a minute. But I was reading about this, and I was like, PCV, what is this? Positive crankcase ventilation? So, in simple terms, you know, when the engine fires in each cylinder, there's those, those gases, they can pass, they blow by the piston, it's called blow by, and they get into the crankcase. And these gases build up pressure in the crankcase, and the PCV system is made to ventilate and recycle these gases into the intake manifold, in, at least in Volvo 240s. In, some ca in older cars, much older cars, they're usually ventilated into the atmosphere and stuff like that, and that's not good for emissions. And Volvo had the PCV system, in their cars, but it's hidden underneath the intake manifold and is usually neglected for years. If systems like this, like if the PCV gets clogged, it can lead to um, a leaking oil drain plug, which I, my Volvo suffered from, and um, a leaking drain pan plug, a leaking oil pan, and even if you look at your valve cover and for some reason there's like a streak of like sludge-like oil, like a stain on the side of it, from leaking from the gasket, it's because your PCV system is clogged and the crankcase isn't ventilating properly and there's a higher pressure than normal that's in the engine. So I looked into the system and I was like, you know, I think I need to replace this. I looked, I looked in my car, I'll show you where the PCV system is in a bit, and I saw there's the system, right? And then underneath this oil breather box, which is underneath the intake manifold and planted in the block, it has this little um, flame trap thing, a piece of it's broken off. I see um, just years of petrified oil on the block from leaking out from the system. So this is probably the original breather box from my car. And it had gotten clogged at one point because the flame trap was not clogged, as you can see. Usually you're supposed to go check the flame trap out during every oil change and see if it's clogged. Mine is really crapped up, but all those little ports are clear. And I never took off the breather hose because... Um, that needed a torque spit, and I don't have that. I'm a novice mechanic, but... Here, yeah, let me read the article, you guys. Okay, so here's the article. The number on IPDUSA is 10045, Extended Oil Changes and Its Effects on PCV, on Crankcase Ventilation. An overdue oil change will cause premature wear, leading to oil burning, high hydrocarbon emissions, and eventually a blown engine. Oil changes are much cheaper than engines. Another problem... To related to neglected oil changes that Volvos are especially susceptible to is fouling of the crankcase ventilation system. As oil wears out, it loses its resistance to forming sludge and solids. This builds up in the crankcase ventilation system breather box, which you can see right there. And, um, well, the wind's fighting me. And commonly plugs up the flame trap filter, which I showed you earlier, and associated components like hoses and separator boxes. Once these parts become clogged, the engine will produce dangerously high crankcase pressure. This forces out oil through engine seals, and in some cases even blows the seals out of their seats and can cause an engine oil dipstick tube to pop out, allowing oil to blow all over the engine compartment, which would not be good. And see, as you can see here, here are some of the parts from IPDUSA. This is the flame trap system and the hose. This is a breather box. This is a Volvo OE flame trap system. I recommend this over that because that's aftermarket, and OE is always the best. That's the, that's the flame trap hose. And these are the, this is a PCV breather hose, and this is a Volvo PCV breather hose, which is worth nearly double of the other one, but I recommend OEM stuff because this is probably made of a cheaper rubber, which will get hard and dry rot much sooner than that one. So, yeah, the parts of the PCV system are breather hose, which I'll show you in the car. It's near the third and fourth header. It's kind of a real pain in the ass to get to, but the breather box, and um, the flame trap. The flame trap had this connected to it, as you can see, it came, became brittle and broke off. And this is a hose that goes to the PCV nipple orifice, which is on the intake manifold, and that, that provides a vacuum assist to the flame trap system so that it can actually, um, you know, helps bring the gases in through the intake manifold. So give me a second and I'll open the hood and show you guys where the system is if you just look at the end. Okay, let's open the hood and check out the PCV system. 
Okay, so you're looking, this is a 1992 Volvo with a B230F and an LH Jetronic fuel injection system. If you have a K Jetronic fuel injection system and a 19, I think, 89 or older Volvo, um, you're going to have to take off the intake manifold to do the PCB system, so unless you're a real Volvo motorhead, motorhead, there's something like that, or very mechanically inclined, take it to a dealer and have them do it because, you know, there's a lot of stuff attached to the intake manifold, which will kind of be um, a real pain to put back together if you don't know what you're doing. I'm sorry, the light is terrible with this, but, all right, let's see. Let's see what we can find. See that right there in the center frame. Let's see if I can get focus on it. I'll point to it. That is the PCV breather nipple, breather orifice nipple thing. I don't like calling it that, but that's what they call it. And there's the vacuum assist connected to it. This vacuum assist is attached to the nipple, goes underneath the fuel rail, underneath the injector, um, part of the injector wiring harness, and goes all the way to the flame trap, which is right here, this thing. This, see, this is the um, PCV breather hose. This is the actual hose that I'm, uh, brings all the gases back into the intake manifold right before the throttle, actually. Here, let me go around the other side. See my shadow. And let's see, where is it? See, there's the breather hose. It's, it's before the throttle body. And the um, gases get sucked in by a vacuum through, up through the flame trap, just in case there's a misfire or something so you don't blow up the engine. And it goes through the breather hose into the the intake, the all intake snorkel piping system. And um, your breather box underneath the intake manifold in that very dark place. I might have to get under the car to show you it, but it's a real pain to actually see from the top. I actually have to jack the car up to see the the system, but um, yeah, so here's the top half of your PCV system. When you clean out your PCV system, you're going to want to take this out and um, uh, what should we call it? just clean it out with a toothpick and some carburetor cleaner. Not the actual manifold or the throttle body, but just the the piece itself, the little brass piece. And be careful. Make sure you use the right size wrench. I believe, I forget what size they used on it, but if I remember, I'll put it in the description. That it, um, because this is brass, and you can easily mess up brass with the wrong size wrench. It's a little mulch from using the right size wrench, actually, because it hadn't been moving so many years. But before I took it out, I sprayed some PB Catalyst, a really light once or twice spritz on there, and let it sit for an hour. That's what I did with all the bolts on the PCB system, because they were stuck really good. And, um, yeah, I used some... P oh, some PB catalyst to loosen up the bolts and uh, it works really well. I recommend that stuff for any do-it-yourself mechanic or any real mechanic, but real mechanics, I don't know, they have their own thing. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, and then when you put it back in, put some anti-seize on the threads so then next time you do your PCV system, next oil change, you um, uh, you uh, are able to take it out with ease without having to use a cheater bar and having to wrench and risk ruining it, destroying the brass. But I'm going to see if we can get, here's a better view of the um, flame trap. So as you can see, the hose goes down, the hose on the bottom, right there, goes to the breather box. And that is where the gases come up through the breather box and go into that system. And this, there, see the vacuum line coming off the side? There's a little, uh, little, uh, What's it called? Like a an extension off the flame trap system. If you look at it on IPD USA, you'll see. You'll totally understand what I'm saying. The extension, the vacuum line gets attached to that, and then it goes to the um, the vacuum assist, which is the PCV orifice nipple thing. And this is the uh, breather hose, which is a real pain to get onto the top of the thing. And you always, when you're putting it back together, you're going to worry about breaking this. Definitely be careful of that little. Uh, piece right there, because if you break that, you're going to need a new flame trap. But what I recommend doing is, when you're putting it back together, I'll probably either do another video on the PCV system next time I do an oil change, but I'm, uh, I'll probably make an oil change video too. I just need a tripod. But I'm, uh, I'm talking too much. But, uh, yeah, when you put this back on, you're going to need some, if you have long needle nose pliers that bend at the end, like to make like a 90 degree angle or a 45 degree angle, you need those, and you're going to want to spur it coat the bottom of the PCV um, flame trap with a little bit of white lithium grease 
a light coat of it so then you can slide the pipe onto it because there's an incredible amount of traction between that rubber and the um, uh, and the plastic. <coughs> Sorry. There's an incredible amount of traction between the rubber and the plastic and it's really difficult to get on without some sort of lubrication, so maybe motor oil or something like that. Just put it on there, really light coat, and then you use the pliers and you squeeze it and you press down with your finger on the um on the breather hose and you bring it up. And um, that should help. And also, cut off the zip tie when you're doing the system and have extra zip ties handy because it's zip tied to the oil dipstick. Let me show you a better view of that. It's zip tied to the oil dipstick so it doesn't shift when you're driving or stuff and something or other. And you just cut that zip tie off with a pair of dikes or diagonal cutters or if, even if you have the proper zip tie cutters, just cut off the zip tie and um, uh, it'll let you maneuver the PCV breather hose. First, you want to pull that off and get it out of the way because this system is, you need either really small hands or you really need to know <laughs> where to put your <laughs> hands that are too big to fit in here because uh, everything is so cramped when working on the system so you need all the help you can get. Definitely those really long needle nose pliers are great, great help. But I'm uh, here, let me see if I can get under the car and I'll show you uh, the breather box.